All eyes will be on the quarterbacks in tonight's NFL kickoff game. Tom Brady entering the season with another Super Bowl ring. Yeah. Yeah. He's the oldest active <laughs> okay? player. Yes, I mean, <laughs> I'm just so annoyed. He's the oldest active player in the NFL <laughs> in the league. Meanwhile, Dak Prescott is back in action with the Cowboys. He missed most of last season because of an ankle injury. For more on what to expect during tonight's game, I want to bring in CBS Morning's co-host and analyst for CBS's The NFL Today, Nate Burleson. Uh, so, Nate, I know, we all know, um, that you have joined the uh, CBS this morning because you are expanding. You have a wide range of interests, um, and, and that is why you're sitting in that, in that seat at that table. But you also know football, so that's what we're going to tap today. We're going to tap your football knowledge. Um, Anne-Marie could hear me grinding my teeth because of Tom Brady. I'm a Giants fan, so the, you know when he was a <laughs> Patriot, that just every time Brady got on the field, it just annoyed the mm out of me. <laughs> so now to see him yeah. still. <laughs> kicking butt. Um, let's talk about the Bucks bringing back all of their starters from last season and Brady being the oldest active quarterback in the league at 44 years old. Does he still have it? Please say he doesn't. He definitely, he definitely <laughs> does. And and Vlad, I heard, I heard that that groan, if you will. I get it. A lot of people are upset that Brady, at 44 years old, is really fighting off Father Time and playing some of the best football he has ever played. But yeah, I still think they are one of the best teams in the business. And and mm. it's because they brought back everybody. Usually, when a team wins a championship, other squads they pick players from that roster. Sometimes they pick coaching coaching staff and members from that roster but they didn't, that didn't happen for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers they brought back all 22 guys 11 on defense 11 on offense and then they brought back some of the backup players that coaching staff is intact and these guys are ready to take over but they are facing America's team the mm. Dallas Cowboys they just got done doing hard knocks so we got a behind the scenes look at everybody involved on that roster even though they're dealing with a little bit of a COVID scare one of their best players he tested positive this is going to be a good one to open up the 2021 NFL season. So you heard Vlad talk about being a Giants fan. I live in uh, the land of the Eagles. So I'm really not <laughs> supposed to be interested in this next question. I'm not supposed to talk about the Cowboys. But that being said, what does Dak Prescott's return to the Cowboys mean uh, for the Cowboys? What does it mean for the NFL? I love that the fandom is just spilling out right now. Uh, we have Giants, we have Eagles. <laughs> I know, there's um, no, you guys journal there's no journalistic <laughs> objectivity <laughs> here, Nate. When we do this, when we I talk we, football. I, <laughs> I, th I thought we were supposed to be impartial here on CBS, uh, <laughs> no, but I, I, I get it and I understand it. I live in New Jersey, so the NFC East is a topic of conversation everywhere that I go. The Cowboys, though, they do have Dak Prescott. He's back under, under center. And here's the thing. Dak Prescott is coming off of that very significant ankle injury, um, but he's dealt with some injuries leading up to this point. Dak Prescott didn't take any reps in the preseason. Jerry Jones was saying that they wanted to be more cautious than anything else. But he has so many weapons around him. What makes the Cowboys good, it's not just the quarterback. It's not just him being the new $100 million guy at the QB position. They have a host of wide receivers. I want you to keep your eyes on Amari Cooper. He's a guy that we respect, a veteran that runs good routes. But C.D. Lamb, the young wide receiver going into his second year, he may soon be the number one wide receiver in offense. And Ezekiel Elliott, who got paid a couple of years back, he is trying to uh, show that he's still one of the best running backs in the business. But the Cowboys, they're always going to be the topic of conversation because we either love them or we hate them, and that's why we watch them. Mm. So what other uh, – All right. Sorry, Emery, was this your I, – I, I'm having so much fun with Nate. I got lost in who's going next. <laughs> no, I know. No, I was, I was thinking about the fact that we just, like, stop being journalists as soon as we start talking about sports. Probably <laughs> because we know, like, sports, it's not exactly our forte, so then we just give up all completely and just talk about what we know. But sorry, <laughs> go ahead. No, well, go ahead, so Vlad. I was going to ask – I was going to ask Nate, I mean, um, you, what other games are you going to be looking at closely on Sunday? Well, I'll point to a couple of games that are on CBS. How about Steelers and the Bills? Big Ben, another quarterback that has aged a little bit, but mm -hmm. he's shown that he still has the juice in the preseason going up against a young gun and Josh Allen. And if you haven't been paying attention to the Buffalo Bills, which is what happens a lot in New York for some reason, we act like there isn't another team doing damage in New York. <laughs> Josh Allen is a tremendous talent. Stephon Diggs, in my opinion, the best wide receiver in the game, and they have a good coaching staff. They are going to be a team that you have to pay attention to week in and week out. So Steelers and the Bills is the game you want to keep your eye on but then also the Browns and the Chiefs 
it's been a long time since the Browns have been good. And I know Baker Mayfield, he's one of those quarterbacks that after his rookie season, we didn't know if, if he was going to make the right strides in the direction that the Browns needed. He had a little bit of a drop in his second year, picked it back up in his third. But we look back at that playoff game where the Browns almost beat the Chiefs. I guarantee this is going to be a high-scoring affair. So those are two games that you need to watch, and they just so happen to be on CBS. Mm. Um, Nate, of course, before we let you go, you are coming to us from the uh, new CBS Morning Studio in Times Square. Um, your first week at work on the air. Well, your first week on the air, of course, you pick like a short week. It's only four days. But I know that you've been yeah. grinding it out behind the scenes preparing for this. What's it been like so far? It's been incredible. Um, as I hear the sirens right outside in Times Square, I mean, that gives you the real New York feel. Um, but we're here, you know, 1515 uh, Broadway in the thick of it, uh, the heart of Times Square. You know, Vlad has been here. The energy is great. The, the look is incredible. Right behind here, this is where Jeff Berardelli, he handles the weather. And this is the main set. And then behind the camera where the viewer can't see, it's a lounge area. When you see us sitting down on chairs, and we have a green room that's so cool that we actually might start doing interviews back there. But, but it has been great, though. And, you know, I, I know that, you know, there's, there's viewers at home that are still getting used to the new look and the new feel. But I'll tell you this. You know, at CBS, we are going to stick to what we do best, which is that true journalistic approach. In the 7 o'clock hour, we're going to give you everything that you need. You will feel fully equipped to walk out and, and take on the world. And then in the 8 o'clock hour, we'll still give you the news. We'll make sure you know everything that's going on locally, nationally, of course, globally. But we're going to have a little fun, too. So it's a great feel. Um, of course, Gail and Tony are incredible. And I just feel like a rookie all over again, proving every single day that I'm meant to be here. You know, Nate, that, that's sort of what I was going to bring up. Um, uh, first of all, let me just say about Times Square, when I was coming in today, some dude had his bike stolen right in front of the door of our building. Our, our security. What? Uh, yeah, I know. Brendan was like, our security guy, Brendan was like, dude, some guy just put his bike here, went to a kiosk, and some dude just came and, and rode off with it. He tried to chase him down, <laughs> apparently was not successful. So welcome to Times Square. But, but Nate, what I was yeah. going to say is um, we were talking about Tom Brady earlier, and I was sort of playfully um, indicating that, you know, I'm not a fan. But I actually have always been a fan of Brady because of his story. And in a way, it rem his story reminded me of your story. You recall back in 2001, Tom Brady was not the starter uh, on the Patriots. Yep. It was a guy named Drew Bledsoe who was an amazing quarterback, an amazing college athlete, an amazing quarterback when he joined the NFL. Tom Brady steps up and wins that Super Bowl and, of course, then has this illustrious career. And I thought of it in terms of you. You came to our show um, a couple of months ago, you, I, I think you were filling in for me on what to watch first before you filled in for Tony, and you just lit up the place. And in and, and that moment, you stepped it up, and you impressed the heck out of everybody who makes these decisions, and look at you now. I mean, have you thought about that? <laughs> Vlad, that means a lot coming from you. Seriously, I, I deeply appreciate that. Um, yeah, that, that is a good parallel. You know, I've, I've been putting in work since I retired in 2014. And at first glance, you might think, here's another football player who's here to entertain us. Um, but that's not the case. You know, I, I, I went to school for communications. Um, I, I minored in business. I knew that I wanted to use my voice after I was done playing. And while I was playing, I launched businesses and opened up firms that help athletes invest money. I opened a restaurant. So seeing me as a football player, I'm thankful for that. It has provided me an opportunity to be where I am now, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. So this is an opportunity, just like Tom Brady, to continue to prove that I belong. And I know Tom Brady wakes up every single day as a fresh opportunity to do so, and I'm going to do the same thing here on CBS Mornings. I would just like to say, I remember Nate coming by the CBSN desk. That's you remember right. that That's desk right. a year and That's a half right. ago, Vlad. Talking football, but then in between the football, there was always all kinds of other things that we would talk about. So, even before the I mornings, purposely did that. CBSN. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but it was true. It was, we always had interesting conversations. So, Nat, uh, Nate, rather, congratulations. Uh, hopefully, we get a chance to talk to you Thank more you. Uh, like this in the future. Thank you so much. No doubt about it. See you guys later. And you can watch Nate along with Gail King and Tony DeCoppel on CBS Mornings. We stream the show every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern right here on CBSN.